good morning. good morning and Merry Christmas again. Merry and we begin our Mass in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God the Father and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Today we celebrate the feast of the Holy Family of Jesus, Mary, and Joseph, and from them we learn so much of how to live our lives in terms of faith and also in terms of being good human beings, and to prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Let us acknowledge our sins and ask for God's mercy and forgiveness. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I've done and in what I've failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, a virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May the Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O God, who are pleased to give us the shining example of the Holy Family, gracious grant that we may imitate them in practicing the virtues of family life and in the bonds of charity, and so in the joy of your house delight one day in eternal rewards. Grant this prayer through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns within the unit of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Sarak. God sets a father in honor over his children. A mother's authority he confirms over her sons. Whomever honors his father atones for sins and preserves himself from them. When he prays, he is heard. 
He stores up riches who, rever who revers his mother. Whoever honors his father is gladdened by children, and when he prays, is heard. Whomever reveres his father will live a long life. He who obeys his father brings comfort to his mother. My son, take care of your father when he is old. Grieve him not as long as he lives. Even if his mind fail, be considerate of him. Revile him not all the days of his life. Kindness to a father will not be forgotten. Firmly planted against the debt of your sins, a house raised in justice to you. The word of the Lord. Blessed is everyone who fears the Lord, who walks in his ways. For you shall eat the fruit of your handiwork. Blessed shall you be, and favored. Blessed are those who fear the Lord and walk in his ways. Your wife shall be like a fruitful vine in the recesses of your home, your children like olive plants around your table. Behold, thus the man is blessed who fears the Lord. The Lord bless you from Zion. Many of you see the prosperity of Jerusalem all the days of your life. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Colossians. Brothers and sisters, put on as God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, heartfelt compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience, bearing with one another and forgiving one another. If one has a grievance against another, as the Lord has forgiven you, so you must do also. And over all these put on love, that is, the bond of perfection. And let the peace of Christ control your hearts, the peace in which you are also called in one body, and be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, as in the wisdom you teach and admonish one another. Sing psalms, hymns, spiritual songs with gratitude in your hearts to God. And whatever you do, in word or in deed, do everything in the name of Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. Wives, be subordinate to your husbands as is proper in the Lord. Husbands, love your wives and avoid any bitterness toward them. Children, obey your parents in everything, for this is pleasing to the Lord. Fathers, do not provoke your children so they not be become discouraged. The word of the Lord. from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. 
When the days were completed for their purification, according to the law of Moses, the parents of Jesus took him up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord, just as it is written in the law of the Lord. Every male that opens a womb shall be consecrated to the Lord and to offer the sacrifice of a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons in accordance with the dictate and the law of the Lord. Now there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. This man was righteous and devout, awaiting the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit was upon him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he should not see death before he had seen the Christ of the Lord. He came in the Spirit into the temple, and when the parents brought in the child Jesus to perform the custom of the law in regard to him, he took him into his arms and blessed him, saying, Now, Master, you may let your servant go in peace, according to your word for my eyes have seen your salvation which you prepared in the sight of all the peoples a light for the revelation of the gentiles and the glory for your people israel the child's father and mother were amazed at what was said about him and simeon blessed them and said to mary his mother behold this child is destined for the fall and rise of many in Israel, and to be a sign that will be contradicted. And you yourself, a sword, will pierce, so that the thoughts of many hearts may be revealed. There was also a prophetess, Anna, the daughter of Phanuel, of the tribe of Asher. She was advanced in years, having lived seven years with her husband after her marriage, and then a widow until she was 84. She never left the temple, but worshiped night and day with fasting and prayer. And coming forward at that very time, she gave thanks to God and spoke about the child to all who were waiting, awaiting the redemption of Jerusalem. When they had fulfilled all the prescriptions of the law of the Lord, they returned to Galilee, to their own town of Nazareth. The child grew and became strong, filled with wisdom, and the favor of God was upon him. My sisters and brothers in Christ, the gospel of the Lord. The Holy Family, they lived long, long, long time before all of us. They are almost like the ancient family. What can we learn from them when they live such a very different life than the life we live today? There's so much that Jesus, Mary, and Joseph still give to us today even though they lived long time ago. We hear in the gospel that Mary and Joseph were law-abiding citizens, law-abiding parents. They followed the law, even though Jesus was born through incarnation. Even though he was a child of God, they followed the law as every parent at that time. They took the child to be presented into the temple and they offered the sacrifice. They wanted this child to grow as also a law-abiding citizen. And as we have heard, when they went back home, the child was growing in wisdom and also with the favor of God. That is the message for the parents. A parent is always a parent, no matter how old the children are. They can be young, they can be old, they are children. Even though they start looking like a ma their mother or their father, they are children. And parents have to show the same care they did when the child was in their hands, the same care 
when they grow up. So we have to reach. Most of you have uh, older children uh, who have their own children. We reach out to them as parents. Of course, relationship change a little bit because they are grown-ups, they are no longer children, but they are the children of you as parents. And we continue to help them in many different ways, how to help them also to be good parents to their children who are the grandchildren or great-grandchildren. That is what Mary and Joseph is showing to us. Parents have to be parents. Some of us, we, have, we still have parents. Some, our parents have gone back to our creator, resting eternal in peace. For those who have parents, especially as we have heard uh, from Sirach, if they are older, they are elderly, they need our care. They need our support. They need us to be there for them. That is what it means to be a child. So even if we are grown up and the, the parents are there, they are in the 90s or close to hundreds, we are children to them. We have to take care of them. That is what Sirach is telling us. Care for your father or your mother in their old age. Even when the mind is failing, because that's where the challenge is, sometimes we try to avoid them. My mother talks too much. My dad talks too much. Well, they are elderly. We have to show them as our parents. You know, when I reflect on this, I have a family friend, uh, a family uh, friend, the husband and wife. Uh, one time I met the parents of the wife. They were in the late 80s, and they were, their health were failing, and they died uh, four months apart. And when I was asking uh, the woman, uh, the, uh, my female friend, I said, where is your brother, the older brother that you talk about? Why is he not coming to see the elderly parents and they are sick? And the answer I got was kind of shocking. Uh, she said to me, my brother said, it doesn't do well with old people. I'm like, what? It doesn't do well with old people? These are parents. And it never came. Even when they passed, he didn't come for a funeral. These things are happening uh, in families. This is not supposed to be like that. Even when parents become elderly, they are our parents, and we have to take care of them, especially when their minds is failing, they need us. Yes, they can make us frustrated or something like that, but we have to take care of them. That is the duties and obligation of a child that we have heard from Sirach. So parents, we have responsibility to the children, and children, we have duties and obligation to our parents. And again, the Holy Family is teaching us that the family is not just a biological family. We can have an extended family, and we have to reach to this extended family. For example, our parish is a parish family. And what makes a, fam a parish family to be holy is the holy different families. If our families as individual families are holy, even our parish will be holy. Look at what we say about our neighborhoods. We say, I like this neighborhood. It's a good neighborhood. Why is it good? Because the neighbors are good people. And that is what the Holy Family is teaching us. Look at Simeon and Anna who came to, this, uh, to Mary and Joseph. They did not know them. And yet they allowed them to even hold the baby in their hands. They are showing an extended family of Jesus Christ. That is the family that we have even today. So how do we make a holy family today? St. Paul has summarized this very well. Heartfelt compassion, kindness, gentleness, patience, humility, bearing with one another. But he stressed so much on one point, forgiveness. Because most families are getting broken because of lack of forgiveness. If something little happens, they break up because there's no forgiveness. So we need to have to put on those virtues. Heartfelt forgiveness is what we need. When we hear broken families, it makes us sad, 
especially when I hear maybe parents, they don't talk to children, or children, they don't talk to each other, or children, they don't talk to parents. It's very sad. But we have to continue. Uh, if we find, for example, in our families, maybe I cannot reach out to my cousin, to my uncle, we need to help to have that spirit of reconciliation, to reach out. That's the way we make holy families. So all of us, in one way or the other, there are people maybe we struggle uh, with in our relationship. So what is the Holy Family telling us? Reach out. Make a Holy Family with those people, even in the extended family, in our parish. That is the message of the Holy Family that is coming to us as parents, as children, as one family in the parish. Let's be holy as, as like them. They were not like people who lead a perfect life. They had challenges, but they abided by the will of God, and God was with them. And that is the way you and I must be. And St. Paul is saying something very important here. Whatever you do, in word, in deed, do it in the name of the Lord Jesus. Let us now profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in the one God, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things we are made. For us men, for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and he became man. For our sake he was crucified under Portia's power. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. And his kingdom we have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Trusting in God our Father, we present our petitions, our prayers, and all the needs of the people around the world. For the family of the church, that she will give witness to the goodness of family life, and support those in difficulties, assisted by the prayers of Mary, the mother of Jesus, and of St. Joseph, as we share in this year of St. Joseph, patron of the Universal Church. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the family of nations, that it will put aside the weapons of war and violence, and the ways of lies and corruption, and seek peace and the good of all, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our own families, that across the generations, we will give thanks for each other and stand together when there are difficulties, as did Joseph and Mary with the child Jesus. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For families impacted by the coronavirus pandemic, that where there is sickness and grief, unemployment and all kinds of suffering, governments and communities will give support and understanding in the spirit of St. Joseph, who showed strength 
in times of crisis. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the dying, that like Simeon, they will see the salvation prepared for all, the divine child Jesus, who is the light of the world. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the departed members of our families and parish, that as we remember them with gratitude, they may rest in peace and like Anna in the temple, praise God forever. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for all our personal intentions and prayers, we offer them to God in silence. Almighty God and Father, in thanksgiving for the Holy Family, we pray that we learn from them nature, love, peace, and unity in our families. And especially, Lord, we pray on this day for the broken families that you give them the spirit of hope and forgiveness. Grant all this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Pray, my dear sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. We offer you, Lord, the sacrifice of conciliation, humbly asking that through the intercession of the Virgin Mother of God and Saint Joseph, you may establish our family's family in your grace and your peace, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your Lift up your hearts. Lift up, Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Lord. It is through right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For in the midst of the Word made flesh, a new light of your glory has shone upon the eyes of our mind, so that as we recognize in him God made visible, we may be caught up through him in love of things invisible. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, 
and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we are claimed. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord and all you have created right to give you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, gracious make holy these gifts. We have brought you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith We proclaim your death O Lord of the flame The resurrection Until you come again Until you come again Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven and as we look forward to his second coming we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice look we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognize the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your son and filled with his holy spirit may become one body one spirit in christ May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with Saint Anthony, our patron saint, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of reconciliation, we pray, O oh Lord, Advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Robert, our Bishop, the order of bishops, and all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen, gracious, to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, Gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world, to our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life. Give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. <clears throat> Through 
through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, O glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Gracious grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. <clears throat> Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and the gracious grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other a safe sign of the peace of Christ. Peace be with you. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
let us pray. Bring those you refresh with this heavenly sacrament, most merciful Father, to imitate constantly the example of the Holy Family, so that after the trials of this world, we may share their company forever through Christ our Lord. Amen. In announcements, birthdays, anniversaries, yes, sir. Days, anniversaries. Okay. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May the Almighty God bless you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God.